and spice it well, let the bones be burned. Because when the enemy gets to working on you and think that you can dib and dab, he said, let's put some spice in it. And let's burn it, let's cook it. And when it says seethe it, uh, the way it's seethe it, and then up here it says scum. It, it talks about scum. Y'all ever seen when something's boiling and you get the ring around the pot? Verse 6, wherefore thus said the Lord God, woe to the bloody city, to the pot, whose scum is therein. The scum is the part that get around the ring of the pot. That means that joke is boiling now. And your life will become scum. And we know scum in this day ain't a good word. But that's what the enemy wants to do to you if you stay prayerless and you can go to church all you want to. That's why you got to be vigilant and keep pulling down the evil altar of a cauldron because the enemy building a pot to put you in. And don't get thinking that's what this word is saying, you too big to be put in a pot. Oh, he don't get me because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. I'm a elder. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm a elder. I'm a deacon. I'm a some. I'm a some. some. I've, been, I've been going to church. He got a pot big enough for you. Because one of the main ingredients, and you can read this later in the book of Job, chapter 41, is pride. Pride is one of the spices that the old enemy pour in that pot. Right in there. And the enemy is the king of pride. That's what the Bible says. He's the king over the children of pride. And pride is a spice. And he'll put it in the pot. And because you got pride, you love to get in it. <laughs> crickets go where crickets go. Grasshoppers go where grasshoppers go. Cats run where cats run. Pride goes where pride goes. And the enemy is the king of pride. And pride goes before the fall. And the Jezebel church will be the one thing that will keep us from praying on Sunday morning. Because the Jezebel church has to be seen. Jezebel has a throne. And Jezebel cannot, Jezebel cannot worship God, that spirit. I'm not talking woman here. I'm talking about the spirit. It has to be controlled, in control. And so it won't give God glory. It has to be recognized. And when God is getting the glory, that means just God's going to move by his power. And God said to them in Revelations, he says, I got something against you. You let that woman Jezebel have all your church. See? And she's prideful. When you, when you tried to pray and honor God and seek him, and this last song that Minister Crystal was singing, amen, but we need revival, Jezebel be saying, well, we already, we, we already got God. Why we need to be waiting in his presence? She, she has her own doctrine. But you need to say with me, I rebuke and destroy every wicked cauldron in the name of Jesus because a wicked pot, the enemy is setting up a wicked pot against your family. Why do you think you have marital problems? Single problems. And it's easy to sleep around. It's a wicked cauldron. We wonder what's happening to the men. There's a wicked, there's a wicked pot, man. There's a wicked pot. He got it's, I mean, you say, well, Pastor, why you always talk about this stuff? Because that's where this generation live. Why does God say, I'll send the spirit of Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord? He says, if I don't send the spirit of Elijah, I'm going to have to curse the earth. You know why? Because what did Elijah do? We said he called fire down from heaven. Fire down from heaven ain't going to do nothing to these people. Elijah repaired the altar. We've been preaching that Elijah called fire down from heaven. No, no, no. 
that was a result of what he did. Elijah read it. He says, repair the altar. And that's what God is doing in the last day, trying to get the altar repaired. And when the altar is repaired, fire is going to fall. And he said, but what, what Elijah would do is turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And that's not just my sons to me or me to my physical sons. That means the doctrine, the foundational things to the, the, the people coming up. And the young people going to want to know what it was like back in the day when we walked in holiness and purity. There's still some of us that walked in holiness or was taught holiness. There's a lot in this generation was not taught it. And God left some of us around that when we got saved, we didn't even know it. But we were being groomed for this last day. So you need to say with me, I rebuke air and destroy. Say it with me. I rebuke and destroy, rebuke and destroy. every wicked cauldron, every wicked, every wicked pot. In the name of Jesus. See, the devil will uh, uh, create a pot for your kids to get in. Kids get in a, a rebellious cycle and you can't get them out. You be down to school every day. And you just get exasperated. Junior, I'm tired of taking off my job, come down here. He's in a wicked pot. In a, she's in a wicked cycle. Look, they're in a wicked cycle. Got hooked up with a group. They used to be a good kid. Now, all of a sudden, they're hanging with some kids that you can't get them pulled out of that. That's a wicked pot. And we got to pull that down. So I'm going to take them to church. Come to church. Church don't help them. The pot's boiling. They in it now. And you got to get an anointing to kick over a pot. You, you literally, Jesus turned over the tables, the money changes at the table. You got to get anointed to kick the pot over in your house. Jesus came in saying, my house shall be called what? A house of prayer. And he kicked over the tables. You got to get the anointing so tough that you come into your house in a spirit way. Amen. I ain't saying go tear up the room, but in a spirit way, in your prayers are so radical, I, I'm kicking over what's got a hold of my son. Because he's on his way to the penitentiary. Your granddaughter, too, if you don't stop that mess. It's a wicked culture. Now, all of a sudden, they're riding with people that are dirty. They don't want to be with the nice girls at church, the nice boys. They want to ride with the ones that got, got the daddy's pistol under the seat. You got to go on your knees and say, I'm turning over wicked cauldrons. In the name of Jesus. Because my, my child's mind is in this soup. You look at them and they, they ain't there. I've been having visions of people, you, and in the visions you're looking at them, there ain't no eyes in, in the sockets. I'm, Lord, what is this? Their mind's gone, son. They mind in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now they body in there. You don't know it, and they, they're dibbing and dabbling. You can't get them back. You don't know what to do. You hollering and fussing, ranting and raving in the house. They in the soup, and the pot's been turned up. They mind as soon they you go on to work, and you working two jobs, or you trying to be a mama and a boy and be, and be a lover too. They know your schedule. There ain't no past nine, you gone. And the enemy got that pot turned up on them. And you know, the more you turn that pot up, the more the flavor come out. But you don't know the secret. The secret is to get out of that bed and get on your knees and go into prayer. You ain't got to do it seven days, but you're going to have to spend eight night on the floor or on your knees, get your pillar, and you're going to have to go on in. That's an evil pot. You can see and smell there's some, something going on in your, in your marriage. I'm just going to tell it like it is. 
had a vision, and I told you part of it, and that's how God deal with me. But I saw all these men. They were hamstrung. They were falling on top of one another. And when I saw it, I said, these men need some water. And the spirit say, they need more than water. But they had hamstrung issues. I began to look it up in the word. I told you this the other day. I began to look it up in the word. I saw that was the way that if you wanted to stop your enemy from going forward with power, the hamstrung, when pro athletes, baseball, basketball, football, when they hamstrung, that's where you get your push off to go with power. And the men of this generation are hamstrung. They can't move with power no more. The home is the base where you get your lunch off power. If you ain't got support in the house with your wife and your kids, you can rally your chest like gorilla man all you want to. You ain't got no power. If you can't find, you can't find a good job to support where you can get the respect of your spouse so you paying the bills, your power's been cut off. All y'all need to say amen. I didn't create this story. I'm just pouring the news. And that's what's wrong with the men of this generation. They've been hamstrung. They've been fed so much flesh from out of that pot because it's everywhere. They have no authority. They don't know, how, they don't, and when they get it, they don't know how to handle it. The only way they know how to handle it is behind the, a gun or a weapon. But the true authority, we say, well, they ain't got it in the church. They ain't got it in church because they ain't got it nowhere else. They don't come to church long enough to get it. Amen. And if they do come to church, most of the time they can't get it because that woman won't let them have it. They blaming the pastor, but it ain't me. It's the whole system. Or it ain't the pastor me, but it's the whole system. The hamstrung. Oh, y'all don't want me to go there. The woman won't give it to them. This whole generation. Now, sisters, I ain't talking about you personally. This whole generation has been taught that if you let them have uh, point A and point B, you can control them. That come out the soup pot. Point C. Don't give him this. Let him make decisions. Let him dis Oh, y'all going to get quiet on me. We need more men. Don't let him be a decision maker. Let him have authority here, here. And then you can make him do what you want to, baby. Just don't give him this. And don't give him your pocketbook. Bible said it. Come to pass in the last day. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to go there. Let's move on. And men are hamstrung. So why are you praying, praying that your sons and your uncles get out the pod? Because somebody done bewitched them because they got the good stuff. They got the good spice. That's why they locked up. The hamstrung. One white man won't step up and be a man, he hamstrung. He put his whole, he put everything but his mind into the pot. One why your son can't break away from that woman, take a woman to no know a woman. He hamstrung. He ain't got no power. And drugs, all drugs is, is just something he uses to numb him down because he ain't got no power. So God said it. He said the men of this generation are hamstrung. Someone come and tell you that my, my husband always, he's, my, he's, the head, he's the head of our house. You look at her like she's a dinosaur woman. 
You fool. It's an evil pot against this generation. Then you expect your boy to grow up and be a man. Y'all don't like me today, do you? It's a large pot with a lid and a handle. It's used for cooking over an open fire. Say this with me. Lord, bring me out of the midst of every cauldron. Yeah, he got a cauldron for women and he got a cauldron for men. The cauldron for women of this generation is that you have to be put in a situation where you can't be a lady. You got to be over, overly aggressive. You got to be domineering. You got to be forward. And actually, the Bible calls it forward. If you soft, you feel like you're going to be taken advantage of. And you got to walk in desperation. Because if there's any bones to be got, Beulah going to get them because she was one hungry woman. Yeah. You got to be desperate. And if you ain't, you got to pray to keep your flesh under control. You next in line for a blessing, and you got to be careful because there's men in sheep clothing. Amen. And the evil cauldron for you is a setup that even though you are a choice and highly chosen, highly favored and chosen, the enemy knows what your Achilles heel is. You can't hide it from him. And if you are a prayerless woman, you might hide it, think you're hiding it from everybody else, but you ain't hiding it from the enemy. So say with me, Lord, keep me from the midst of every evil cauldron. Loneliness, singleness can be a cauldron for you. There's stuff you have done because you are lonely and thoughts you've had what the enemy have got in your mind because you are lonely that if you just had sometimes and know that they were celebrants and they were straight, you wouldn't have even considered it. You wouldn't have shared some woman's man for a hot second if you could have just found your own for a little bit. Desperation calls you to share another woman's man. And that's an evil cauldron. I ain't laughing at you. I ain't making fun of you. Men do that because of the wickedness in them. Your cauldron was loneliness and despair. It masquerades in a spirit of lying, saying, you won't admit you were lonely and de in despair. So it masquerades in a lying spirit where you say something like, they wanted me. But we won't go there. Say this with me. The enemy will not eat my flesh because that's what he wants to do, eat your flesh. And that includes every part of your body. You spend more money on your hair than you do in putting in money, putting in to, to, to support ministry. Follow your bank statements. Queen gets more of your money than the, uh, you, you, you joke about the building fund, but you ain't joking about Queen's old raggedy parking lot. Right. Right. I ain't never seen you pull up there. Say, you ought to get, the, get this lot fixed. 
I had to park at the deep end, them chuck holes so big over there, but you ain't never said nothing about her stuff. <laughs> the enemy will not eat my flesh, break my bones, and put me in his cauldron. Mike, Micah 3 and 3. Well, listen, lady, I ain't trying to mess with you. We men spend too much money on our hair, too. You know, I'm talking about just regular old cut. They, them jokers want 40 bucks. Break my bones and put me in this cauldron. Michael, Michael 3 and 3. The enemy is trying to break your bones. That's what he do with sadness. That's what he do with despair, discouragement. He's breaking your bones. When you discourage, he's breaking your bones. Listen, that's a spiritual thing. You can't eat. Television watching you rather than you watching it. Your imprint on the couch. Your body shape on in that couch, <laughs> that enemy breaking your bones. Your figure in the in the, in the in the in the couch, that's the, your bones being broken. But the Bible said about Jesus that none of his bones was broken. That's a cauldron. You're being boiled. You crying and got tissue. Brothers too. Brothers run around because they being boiled. They look for easy pickings because they being boiled. Do me a favor here, Takari. Get my, my staff up there. Bring it to me. Say this with me. Lord, deliver and protect me from every part of evil in the name of Jesus. Say it with me. Let's pray that. Lord, deliver me and protect me from every part of evil in the name of Jesus. That's Jeremiah 1. Let's turn there real quick. Thank you, sir. Let's turn there real quick. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Say, deliver me from every part of evil. I, I, I want you to make me so sensitive that I can hear. You know, it's hard to go in the kitchen and pull out a pot. I know in my house, I can hear, sister, when she's pulling a pot out, man, I get happy. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? When I hear the pot, I'm like, oh, something's some going to go down up in here. But you can't pull a pot out without making some noise. Amen? You can bring in them stuffs, but when you pull a pot out, some, something to go down. So, Lord, help me to hear spiritually when the enemy is pulling a pot out. Yeah. I want to hear it. I want to be about, about what belongs to me, my house, my ministry, my church, my, my family, my children. I'm talking about my adult children. I'm talking about you. You under my covering. You too. I may not know what's going on with you, but I want to be discerning enough to know. I don't know what it is, but the enemy got Pastor Lee in a pot. He got my sister in a pot. I want to be able to feel you. I mean, I want you to feel me. Let's not just throw one another. Put that Negro, excuse me, my, my white friends. <laughs> my daughter gets on me about that. Excuse me. I don't want to just say, put them in the pot, no better for them. But I want to hear he got, a, he got you in a pot. If you hear he got me in a pot, don't, don't hip, hip, hooray, burn him, turn it up. They got our pastor in a pot. Discouragement got him, and they got you. Maybe you slipped and fell in a pot. Maybe you worked with the enemy to get in the pot. The enemy can talk you into a pot. That's how, oh, boy, y'all ain't hurting that. He's so good at it, means that he can talk you in the pot. Now, come on, get in. Come on, get in. Every one of us done got in that soup. Okay, you say get in. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to be too hot. Get in. I'm going to cut it down. It'll be cool at first. You sure? Yeah, get in. I ain't going to be. <laughs> we, we put both feet. Sit, sit, down, sit on down. You, that's how you got in there. You, <laughs> yeah, cut, cut it down, little devil. You know, if it was up at the full temperature, you never would have got in. But you got in. Come on, get in. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to simmer a little while. You got in there. He said, ooh, it's getting a little uncomfortable. He said, oh, that's all. <laughs> 
put a little spice up in there. For, for you know it, he done put the lid on it. <laughs> and you, you screaming, you can't get out. <laughs> Prayers ain't working. <laughs> you in there wringing your hands, you boiling. How I get into this mess? I can't, <laughs> can't pay your bills, you know, mad at somebody, you know. How did I, how did I ever trust him or her? Why did I marry this fool? <laughs> how did I get a relationship with him or her? You know what I'm saying? The lid on it. Can't nobody hear you. You swear God can't hear you. Devil didn't throw you in there. You got in that pot. Get on in there. Pull your kids in there. <laughs> Say it with me. Lord, deliver and protect me from every evil pot. I'm not getting in that pot. Hey, some of us was professional pot crawlers. Talking about night crawlers, we was pot crawlers. Amen. I got a T-shirt. <laughs> Ain't getting in that pot. Am I lying about it? Got in some financial pots. I ain't getting into that. How many know about that? <laughs> I ain't getting into them pots no more. <laughs> Amen. Some stuff you just ain't getting into. Uh, look at here quickly. And the word of the Lord, chapter 1, verse 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me a second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For, lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, said the Lord. And they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne.